There have been many times where the original developer of a game isn't making the game that people want, and this leads to companies filling in these gaps. Some of the best 2D Metroidvanias have been made while we've been waiting almost 20 years for an original Metroid. Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance was the last original 2D entry in the franchise, and the long wait has left many fans of the genre hungry for similar experiences. Shadow Complex, Hollow Knight, and Ori all come to mind in games that not only match their inspiration, but in many ways surpass it, setting a new standard in the genre. The Metroidvania genre has been fully plundered at this point. Yes, there will be more excellent titles to come in the future, but there is no shortage for fans to find something in a similar vein. Nintendo also created the iconic series A Legend of Zelda, a series that started out as an adventure game and has evolved over the years into something of a much grander scale. The series has evolved to the point that the top-down style that dominated the 16-bit and handheld era has gone largely ignored. In 2019, Nintendo gave us a taste of what a top-down Zelda would be like in the modern era with the remake of Link's Awakening, and it left many wanting more. And in many ways, Tunic feels very similar to Link's Awakening, and that is not a bad thing. Unlike Metroidvanias, there have been very few Zelda-likes that have managed to capture the essence of what made this series so special in the first place the whimsical, fantastical world that just begs to be explored and discovered as you uncover every stone and cut every blade of grass. You start out as a cute fox in a mysterious yet beautiful land. You are completely unarmed, have no protection, and nothing to your name. And if this sounds familiar, it's because this is the Zelda blueprint that seems easy to duplicate, but in fact, there is much more to it. One paw after the other, you set out on your journey with wonderful, serene audio scoring your exploration, and words can't do the audio justice, so just listen to it for a few seconds. Across the beautiful landscape, you find signs which are in a language that you don't understand, which instead of being frustrating, they add to the mysteriousness of the lands, and you need to be careful about where you can explore early on until you find something that you can defend yourself with. I think there's a stick first, but I found the sword, which you can equip to either X, Y, or B, which is a small way that Tunic allows you to tweak how you play, but for the most part, the controls are simple and very effective, and they stay out of the way so you can enjoy the world. One small gripe is that you might use your sword frequently, but your alternative items you don't, and sometimes it can be easy to forget which button you map the item to, and this could all be alleviated with a small icon at the edge of the circle. Once equipped, your challenges get harder as you venture into dungeons in search of treasure and artifacts, but be wary, you will die quick and you will die a lot. You will die so much that it will push you just to the point of wanting to quit, but thanks to a very forgiving checkpoint system, you are instantly back in the action. The dungeons are excellent and littered with treasure chests and powerful enemies, but they are also filled with some Metroidvania elements, bridges that need to be accessed from one side before they can be used both ways, and the best part is that these remain set up upon your death. The smart checkpoint system combined with the Metroidvania elements make it feel like even though you might be dying, you're still making forward progress. One of the best additions that Tunic has made to the Zelda-like formula is the telescopes that are randomly placed across the lands, and these telescopes give you a zoomed out view to determine what exciting and dangerous things lie ahead. The telescopes come in different sizes, which can affect how far you can see to get an idea of where your journey might lead you next. My experience with the demo ended when I found a way out of the dungeon. I was returned to the title screen, but I had barely scratched the surface of the world. Many areas that were available to be explored that I assumed I would go and venture to later, and this bodes well for the depth of the full game upon release. Between the score, the aesthetic, and the atmosphere the tunic creates, the game transports me back to the feeling of when I began exploring as Link back in the late 80s and early 90s. Tunic is not trying to hide its adoration for The Legend of Zelda. The similarities are glaring, from staple items that wouldn't look out of place in a Hylian shop, cutting grass, and even down to the little green garb that the little fox wears. Tunic also does enough to feel like it has its own identity, thanks to a lot of clever aesthetic choices and game design features. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite Zelda-like is and if you're looking forward to Tunic.